It's time to talk. It's time for Lewison Live. Exclusive. Interactive. Topic of the day, the right size matters. With Peter Lewison. Marine de Vard. And David Seal. Coming straight from Italy, David is a passionate yacht enthusiast. With Yachts for Sale, he runs a YouTube channel with more than 140,000 followers. As a kid, he dreamt of becoming an actor. Oddly enough, he recently played an important part where he helped to deliver a baby in a hotel lobby. But that's a different story. Welcome to the first ever edition of Lurson Live, an interactive experience with international reach, with you asking us some interesting questions. But this show is not just as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. The idea is to broadcast this show three times a year, covering a variety of different topics. We've already received a lot of questions from you, which we'll be looking at later. Please keep those questions coming in throughout. I can't do this on my own, so let me present you my co-moderator, Marine De Ward. Marine is the founder of Super Yacht Times. He has more than 350,000 followers on Instagram, making him one of the foremost connectors in yachting. He became a yacht nerd early when he was just out of diapers, and today he knows the yachting scene like no other. Merain is always aware of the latest and hottest news, so it's no surprise he's here today. So I'm very excited to be here, just like David. Well, thank you for joining us. We had over 850 people who had registered for today. And I see there's a lot of people joining us. Um, I will be managing the chat and also asking the questions. So you can leave a question in the chat area. Also, there is a vote button, as you can see. And in there, we have a question. Do you think Lurson has built more yachts over 90 meters or under 90 meters? So if you have a full screen on, maybe you have to undo the full screen to see the chat function and the vote function. We can only vote for a few minutes, so please vote now. Um, then, of course, your questions, you can write them down, and you can also like questions. So if you like them, if a lot of people like a question, it comes to the top. And a bit later on, I will ask some questions to Peter. We also had a few pre-recorded questions, so I'll also ask some of these. And, but please keep uh, asking your questions. David? That's great. I hope you've got plenty of charge on that uh, computer, by the way. We're going to be in big trouble. If, I think uh, we'll be fine. <laughs> that's good. Can you see how many people have joined? Can you see from your screen? Uh, over 200 are already live. That's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, we encourage everybody to, answer, to ask their questions. And now let's meet the man who will be answering those questions Peter Lurson. In his heart and soul, Peter is a shipbuilder. Family plays an important role in his life. Two of his three children made him a proud grandfather. Problem now, he has to do a refit to enlarge his six and a half meter Lurson boat from 1947. He's traveling around the world for his clients and always keeps an eye on the globe. He's collected more than 150 of them. So, Peter, it's a pleasure and a privilege to be here with you today. Good to see you, David. Before we get started, I have to say, <laughs> I thought you might collect model boats. You collect globes, seriously. Yeah, I got my first pocket globe, which was pretty easy when I was like 20, 21. But uh, then you do more and more, and I have now the smallest is in a walnut, and the biggest has a diameter of about a meter 50, until my wife kicked me out and said, look, no more globes in the house. Because <laughs> she has to dust them, I suppose. That's the um, not even that, it's just the space. <laughs> <laughs> and the grandchildren, how many grandchildren? Two, six and nine months. Great pleasure. Of course, it makes you feel old. <laughs> but um, it's great, like when a child, the baby's crying, look after it. Changing <laughs> diapers, no more. No, no, I, I never did that actually. But <laughs> I was very good, I was very fast. <laughs> Excellent. So the, the theme that we're going to look at in the first ever lesson lies, uh, live is that our size matters. Uh, Lurson build yachts from 55 meters to 180 meters. 
I mean, when I heard that, I thought, really? You, you've made Azam, which is 180 meters. You've made Dilbar, which seems to eclipse the sun when it comes into Antibes. Why would you want to focus now on, on smaller sub 60 meter yachts? Well, first of all, a 60 meter yacht isn't small. It's a huge boat. Uh, and we've built many of those, we, uh, you know, Aces, Capri, Lady Catherine V, and a few others, and then the 68 meter Hermitage, it's the big boat that catches the attention. It's um, you know, a unique 135 meter yacht, or as you mentioned, Azamo Dilba, is special and will grab all the attention. But in fact, we have built more yachts under 90 meter than above 90 meter. And we think that is a market segment that is very important for us. People that are coming up from a 30, 40 meter, possibly a semi-displacement, and then come to a displacement yacht they will not go for an 80. They are happy with a 60, 65 meter. So it's important, and there are more clients, to get to know these clients and actually to be able to service the market. And actually, even recently, you've had some really big launches which have made the, the press, Super Yacht Times. <laughs> so why now? Why is now the right time to, to start talking about the sub 60 meter markets? Well, the time now is because we are building, in effect, a 55 meter. We signed the contract in 18, we will deliver her in uh, late, or early, late spring, early summer next year. And we want to show to clients, prospective clients, uh, brokers, designers, that we are able to build these and that we would like to build these. Now that's one of those yachts that um, it seems to have been quite a, a secretive project to a certain, to certain extent. Certainly not many people have seen much of it, but I believe we have some footage of that yacht. So what can you tell us about this? Well, she is, um, and we'll see some, these are models. This is from the uh, start of the uh, steel cutting. We built the ship completely in the shed, which you see pictures of. Um, I wish it would be that fast, as you see on the video. Um, we have different challenges. We launched her this April to do an inclining experiment, which we see shortly. This is when we take her out of the shed. and. After the, the steel shed, we move her into the outfitting shed for the final outfitting with an um, interesting interior. So it's been exciting to see in the background, we see a, a, an 84 meter uh, avantage. It's exciting to build a boat of this size. It's a little bit like going back in time. I, I would have thought um, after building such so many large yachts, a 55 meter must be a, a walk in the park, or, or does it have different challenges for that sort of size? <laughs> it's, you know, on a 55, 60 meter, you have the same principal systems like on a 100 meter board. You got a propulsion, you got the air condition, lots of piping, cabling, and so on and so on. So whilst on a 100 meter plus, it's a question, the enormity of the workload and coordinating hundreds of people, sometimes close to a thousand people working on a yacht. On a boat of this size, the question is more how to squeeze all the systems in. And that has been quite a challenge. It helps if you have lots of engineers, but you're right, um, that takes specialist uh, knowledge. And uh, why don't we ask the project engineer, Lorenza, to explain what troubles or difficulties she has encountered. Yeah, that's uh, Lorenza Allegrini, isn't it? Uh, Lorenza's uh, coming to us from Rendsburg. Hi there, Lorenza. Hi, Lorenza. Good afternoon, Mr. Lursen, and hello, David. Yes, indeed, there are challenges in building a 55-meter yacht. You may think, and you would be right, that our extensive expertise from the larger project is an important source for any project size. However, this doesn't mean that a smaller yacht is an easy task. The challenge is actually to cope with the complexity, complexity to apply technology to a smaller volume. Let's not forget, in many cases, we are talking about the same technology as larger projects, but you have here technical spaces, engine room areas, much smaller, and you still have to satisfy the lean operation by a smaller crew. An example, air conditioning. You need a different system for a 55 meter yacht and your usual design solution probably is not the best solution anymore. 
other areas, mechanical equipment like passerelle, cranes, telescopic masts, you have to search for the best suppliers in these fields who can provide light, compact and bespoke solutions. So thanks to our experience, we are able to transfer the level of customization to a smaller package. And to do that, we need to be progressive, flexible in our technical choices. We need to try to find innovative and simple solutions. Before I joined Lursen, I worked as a project manager for smaller size yachts, and I was hired to apply exactly this kind of knowledge and experience to our project. On top of this, our owner representative team, they have a fantastic experience with this size of yachts and their close work with us has provided efficient solutions for both parties. Our aim was and is to avoid unnecessary complications and to maintain the highest standards. Thank you so much, Lorenza. Now, Lorenza, during that a uh, message from her mentioned the bespoke solutions. Can you give away anything about the bespoke side of that project? Of the project as such as a bespoke project. Uh, we couldn't use any prior knowledge. The exterior styling and the design is completely uh, to the owner's liking. And um, he worked with Dickie Bannenberg. So uh, quite frankly, that's Dickie's domain, uh, the design feature. Um, I'm an engineer, not a poet, so why don't we ask Dickie about the bespoke features? Yeah, that's a great idea. Actually, um, it was Dickie's father, his first large yacht in 1962, Pegasus, that was a Lursen, yep. and sadly the, the last large yacht as well, uh, Rising Sun, was uh, one of his projects too, is that right? Yeah, and this was um, uh, Dickie's first delivery because sadly John passed away during the construction time, and then Dickie carried on to delivery with the yacht. So, you know, a bit, bit of history between the two families. Yeah. And he did a great job on Rising Sun. And as did the studio on the 55 and the 84 uh, meter that we just delivered this spring. Excellent. Well, Dickie's joining us from London. Hi, Dickie. Hi, Peter. Hi, Hi David. Dickie. Very um, excited to be on this first Lurson Live talk show. Thank you for having me. Um, 13800, we're very excited about this project and very proud to be building it. We're doing it for a client who we've done a couple of previous yachts for. Um, and when he was starting or looking around to start this, this third one at 55 meters, he wasn't getting exactly what he wanted in his various huntings around for somebody to build this. Um, he came into the studio one day and saw um, some profile studies which we'd prepared of sort of Corinthia derivations which we were doing for Lurson, various kind of evolutions, albeit at a, a smaller scale. He loved those and said, do you think, do you think Lurson would do this for me? And we said, yeah, sure they would. Um, set up at a, a meeting involving Peter and Michael. Um, and the thing about this um, project is that 55 meters, but it's a very bespoke uh, project, by which I mean it's resolutely not based on any kind of platform or series yacht. It's just a fully bespoke individual down to the most customizable and uh, negotiable centimeter. It completely reflects what this client wants. And I think he was probably attracted by various things. He liked the Lurson team and sort of engineering thoroughness. I dare say the the, the backstory, if you like, and the heritage of the Bannenberg and Lurson connection, particularly having built Corinthia back in 1972, uh, was important too. Um, so we're very excited. As I say, the project's going ahead, full blast. Uh, we really want to get over there, subject to everything as, as soon as we can to catch up on the latest progress. Um, but it, as I say, it's, um, it's just turned out to be a very uh, detailed and, uh, and individual and, as I say, bespoke project for this client. Thanks, Dickie. Thank you so much. You know, over the years, you must have met so many different yacht designers and built up an incredible relationship with them. Sure. It's part of the fun in our industry is meeting interesting people and designers are a very key element in the relationship between owners and shipyards. 
they by definition are closer to the owners and a good relationship with them, other than that we enjoy even friendship with most of them, is the fact that the better they understand the client, the better they understand us. Then they are a good translator of the client's wishes to the shipyard, so the end product really is what the client is expecting. Absolutely. Now I'm really keen to find out how many questions are coming in, so I'm <laughs> going to hand over to Marine. How are we getting on with the questions? Very good, actually. We have, uh, I see a lot of questions coming in already. I mean, don't forget to post your question if you came in a bit later. In the chat function, you can type your question, and Peter is going to join me in a minute, and we're going to answer some of them. Um, you can also like questions, so, and then they pop up a bit higher in the order, and I can see them and pick them up. We also have a few pre-recorded questions from video, and one of them is from a person we all know very well, Jonathan Beckett. So let's see what Jonathan wants to ask to Peter. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jonathan Beckett, and I'm the CEO of Burgess. Burgess have been building large yachts at the Lurson shipyard for more than 20 years, and we've had a great collaboration with Peter Lurson throughout that time. Thank you, Peter. It's absolutely fascinating that today you're building smaller yachts, and I have two questions for you. What is the largest small yacht that you would build, and what is the smallest small yacht you would build? Thank you. Thank you for the question, Jonathan. Well, Peter, what do you think? The lower end of that range of yachts would be the 500 GT. Uh, 500 GT is a, below is a different regimen of rules and regulation, which we don't really specialize in. So we stay above the 500 GT. That's really serious ships. And the upper end will be around 80 meter, which is what we can build on land in a dedicated shed or dedicated sheds in Rendsburg. Thank you. Um, before I go to the uh, questions from the chat, we also got a few sent in from the users. One of them is from Chris Hudson, and he's more talking about the size of the boat. So he's asking, a 40 to 60 meter yacht can still have five staterooms, toys, tenders, beach club. Why are so many of the Lursen yachts <laughs> especially so big? Well, we build what clients want. And part of the fun in the relation with the client is sitting with the client and defining, can we get all the wishes that he or she wants in a 50, a 60, or 100, 100 plus meter yacht? Yes, you can have six be bedrooms on a 60 meter yacht, but you clearly can have a bigger tender on a larger yacht. You can have a dedicated cinema and other feature rooms and the yacht is really, the size of the yacht reflects the space requirement defined by the client. Thank you. I saw one interesting question speaking about boats. You know, what is your favorite yacht yourself? Do you have one? <laughs> you have children? I have one son, one year old. That's an easy question. What's your favorite child? I got three <laughs> children plus two grandchildren. And if anyone asks me, so tell me who is your favorite child? Look. I love them dearly, and it's the same with yachts. The, I think we've done some incredible yachts. Uh, when you look back, you tend to forget about the problems, and every time we launch a, a yacht on a slipway, or it leaves the dock, it's a very emotional moment. Yeah. It still is, and with every yacht the same. So I don't really have a favorite yacht. I love them all. Okay, then we have another question which <clears> was sent in by Alan Weaver, thank you for that. With the increasing gulf between the very wealthy and the rest of us, is there a danger of large yachts becoming socially unacceptable? I don't think yachts as such can be looked at or regarded as socially unacceptable or acceptable. I don't think it's a question that is really relevant. Um, we should never forget the industry as large employs thousands of people with very qualified jobs, even more so if you take the subcontractors and suppliers. And if you then take the yachts in service, you have more and better qualified crew on yachts than on commercial ships. You have the same number of crew on an 80 to 100 meter yacht than on a 300 meter container ship. So there is a huge economic benefit that yachts have. 
I fully agree, Peter. And as a yachting enthusiast, it would be a lot less fun to chase some oil tankers. Huh? <laughs> I would think so. So we actually got another video question, and this time from Wilco Smith. So let's see what Wilco wants to ask to Peter. Hello, people. My name is Wilco Smith from the company Henselt. When size does matter, what does Lursum do to make yacht building more green or even circular? Thank you very much. Well, that's, that's a very often posed question. Our clients are generally acutely aware of the impact. So they are pushing us already, asking what is new in technology to reduce the impact. Um, we are way ahead of any commercial shipping with regards to exhaust cleaning, with regards to special technology to reduce power consumption. So we're very good at that. In terms of circular, you know, yachts live very long. And when they build out of steel and aluminum, it's easy to recycle them. Yeah, thank you. So if we now go to some of the questions from the chat, and one was sent in anonymously, can Lursen really build 70 meter and under yachts and not be incredibly overpriced in this segment? Well, the challenge is uh, send me your tender and we'll see for it. Uh, yes, I think it will be a challenge, and, um, but we are prepared for that. And um, you cannot put the same general overheads, obviously, on a smaller boat than you do on a bigger boat. So, yes, we think we can deliver a quality product for an acceptable price. Yeah. And, and, and looking at you know, the price, and you know, these days you see a lot of platforms as well. I mean, you just spoke about 13800. One, one, and that project is a fully bespoke. But someone, uh, Duncan Bateson, is asking, will sub 60 meter yachts follow an established platform or will it be a bespoke yacht? It will be a bespoke yacht, but as, on, on, as every shipbuilder does, we tend to repeat the proven parts in a, in a ship. Um, if you have an 85 or 90 meter yacht, the engine room package will be almost identical. So if, it's no, if you know it's working fine, then we repeat it. Yeah. But it's not like other builders do when they do a series of yachts. Our yachts will be bespoke to the client's liking. Yeah. And is that also the answer, uh, the question, if you're going to build on speculation, yes or no? Um, it's always a discussion within the family. Should we follow that route? Um, it's a question of the investment into that uh, yacht. But we have been fortunate that we never had to because we always had and have enough client to keep us more than busy. Can I, can I interrupt on that one? Because um, I'll ask you a question that I've been asked uh, in the past. If you had to build a spec yacht, what size would you build? Look, if I would do it for myself, I think it's 60, 65 meters. No, if you had to do it for a client. Or, or I still think, I still think between the 60 yeah. to 70 meter range is the ideal size for a spec boat. It's very versatile. It offers lots of uh, possibilities. And on the other hand, is not becoming a very big investment. I mean, it's a big investment as such, but the longer the yacht, the bigger the investment. So I think between 60 to 70 meter, possibly a 66, So you think there's a good market in that 60? Would be the right size that we would do. Thanks. Sure. And, and, and Max? We had a question of a Marcus, actually. What is the maximum length that Lursa could build? I mean, there are questions about 200 meter yachts as well. We are just covering a big floating dock and the covered part will be 200 and I think 230 meters long. So um, the dock is 280 meters. It's not an issue. Um, we haven't seen any inquiries in that range yet. No. Um, I think, you know, I saw a question as well asking about one of the yachts I very much like, and especially when I grew up and started getting interested in yachts, which is Octopus. Did she change the perspective of Lursen to build larger yachts? How important was she for what Lursen is today in terms of large yacht building? Octopus was an interesting challenge. And actually, the way Michael and I sold the yacht was even more fun um, by convincing the original owner, who is a absolute computer 
you know, he was way up in the computers, but we went there with an old wooden model and paper boards uh, to show him our proposal. We've done big boats before. Uh, very few people know that we built a boat that is called now Dubai with 160 meters. So we've been in that market already before, but it was an interesting concept because it's um, a lot of research. It's basically, I guess, a role model to uh, other big boats, yachts that are built now and that do research. Yeah. And we have a, a question here from Gabriel. Uh, a huge yacht, would you say, or a smaller one with a shadow vessel? Which one would be better? That very much depends on the client's personal use of the vessel. If there is a client who, for his lifestyle, requires lots of tenders, submarines, possibly more than one helicopter, um, then a shadow boat might make sense. And then there are clients that say, oh, I don't need the hassle of having a second crew, a second ship, and all that all together. This is very much dependent on the very personal idea how to use and enjoy the yacht. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a judgment call one way or the other, but um, clearly, if a client has a request for that, we would entertain, and I can assure you, we would find a way to build it competitively as well. Yeah. Interesting. So I think also on, on the construction side, are you also looking at ways of how you can build faster? I know is asking. <laughs> there is a sequence in the construction of yachts. Yes, sometimes um, we all wish to be faster. Certainly the clients like to be faster. I mean, some of them take their time before they uh, sign the contract, but certainly once they sign, they're going to be, they want it very fast. I don't think you can really cut back on the delivery time um, that is currently in the market. Yeah. And, and it's a question from Michael Verdon. Do you see the market trending downwards in terms of size? Is that also why you stepped in this market segment? I think we'll see that the clients are very conscious of what they want. They're very conscious before they sign, what is it that I want in my boat? And that defines then the size. It's not anymore the wish, okay, I want a 100 meter plus, I want a 70 meter plus, 80 meter plus. We see that clients are informing themselves even more so than before, and they have very clear ideas what they want to be in and on, on their yachts. Yeah. We also got a question sent in from James Cunningham. Have you seen an impact of COVID-19 on the industry and on client budgets? Other than what you read in the newspaper, I wouldn't be entitled to look into the client's uh, personal situation. Um, currently, and I think speak for my, for my uh, Northern European colleagues, I'm sure, yes, it makes it more complicated, but it ha didn't have any impact. Um, I didn't hear of anyone who lost contracts during COVID. The long-term impact of COVID remains to be seen in the next year. Clearly, if you want to self-isolate and still have fun, the way to do that is buy a yacht, use a yacht, because then you're safe there. Makes sense. So if we look at um, some other questions, <coughs> I mean, you can still send in your questions. We have a, a lot of them. I think one of the interesting ones is also the refit business of Lursen. With Blomofoss, you have like a big facility in Hamburg. Do you see more of your yachts returning as well to the place where they were built for maintenance? Um, absolutely. Um, one of the reasons we purchased the Hamburg yard was our desire to be able to service our clients with our old capacity, we wouldn't have any docks to get the boats back to us for the proper service. Um, so the Hamburg Yard will be, is functioning as a Lursen service center and actually will be in the future named Lursen Yacht Services. And yes, the market is growing depending on the increasing size and numbers of the yachts. 
and um, we hope that everybody comes back to the place where the yachts got built because uh, you wouldn't come, you wouldn't want to have your Mercedes uh, serviced by an unqualified dealer. Very good. So I think we come to the last question, and it's actually a topic which, I mean, I haven't asked the question yet, but I see a lot of questions about it, right? <laughs> and it's about alternative propulsion systems like fuel cells, hydrogen, electric. What is your view on that? <laughs> um, I think we'll see changes. I can see that shipbuilders will be possibly, hopefully, smarter than the car industry. We are researching fuel cell technology for yachts. We are in a big research program. We see that coming. And because it's such an interesting topic, we decided to talk about it in the next Lurson Live, um, with where we are, what we do, and what we think where the market is going. So um, that's an easy question to pass yeah. and just say, pop by again in three to four months at the next Lurson Live. Well, very good. Thank you very much, Peter. I think we go back to David now. <laughs> and we are coming towards the end of this first ever edition. I have a couple of very important messages for you that you'll want to wait on for. But first of all, let's find out what the results of that survey were. So actually, most of you got the question right. It's under 90 meters. So in 63, almost 64% of, of our audience had it right. That's great. Yeah, I mean, that they know Lurson and I guess the boats you've built. So well, you we've been hammering the message down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You did kind of give it away at one point as well. Julian. Yeah, I, I was hoping you were closing the survey before. <laughs> but then we know at least they're listening, right? <laughs> so we're really interested in hearing your ideas for future topics. It's important to us that we make this of interest and of use to you. We're also interested in your feedback. It's all too easy to just say that was absolutely fantastic. Peter, you're wonderful. Marine, um. you're so beautiful. But we do want some You're amazing, honest. David. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was trying to think of something positive about myself. Um, so we have a, an email address on screen. It's live at lurson.com. Please do give us your feedback. Do give us your ideas for future topics. It's really important to us. So uh, with that, thank you so much, Marine. And thank you, of course, Peter, very much indeed. David, thanks a lot, Marine. Been a great experience. Truly enjoyable. Well, thank you. you. Thank you as well, Peter, I think. And if you want to watch it back, it will be on the Lurson website soon or on the YouTube channel. And uh, look out for the next episode. It will be about future propulsion technologies. We'll let you know as soon as there's a date for the next Lurson Live. Thank you. And my question is, how was your experience as midwife? I was a midwife about <laughs> helping. Well, that's a story about a Russian lady an English yacht captain and a hotel lobby, which I'll have to tell you about, I think, over a glass of wine. Or maybe a Don't miss it.